大家好，我很高兴今天可以跟你们一起学汉语。Okay, who of you just understood what I said? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, there are a few ones. So the other ones who didn't raise their hands, you're the perfect audience for this talk. <laughs> the ones who did raise their hands, I hope there will be something interesting for you as well. Let's dive into the Chinese language because I want to tell you about it. Like for me,、uh, it was so cool to learn about Chinese language. Because it helped me to really understand the culture better. It was a gateway for me to understand the people. And I spent one and a half years in China. Actually, they called me Kang Andre, and、uh, couldn't pronounce my name Andre. That's really right. And let's dive into the language and see what it has to offer. Chinese characters. You've all probably seen them before. So they sometimes look a bit intimidating, and there are so many of them, right? But they've got this inherent beauty in them, and I will try to、uh, show you some of it. So there are really many characters. So the dictionary, which actually holds most of them, has over 100,000 of them. But the good news is, for example, to pass the highest level of the Chinese examination, you just have to know 2,600 of them. And actually, in this talk, we will already cover 0.5% of all the characters you need to pass the exam. So let's go. Let's start with Niao. This thing does it remind you of anything you might have seen in your life before? Any ideas? Chair. A chair and something I heard. Some other ideas? Person sitting. A person sitting. Actually, this is a bird. <laughs> and if you now see it, you probably recognize the eye and maybe little feet as a line. Right. So this is called a pictogram. That's one way. Uh, characters are formed in Chinese, and so here things from the real world are taken and depicted in a character. So Chinese is a logographic script where each character holds a meaning, and in our case, the English alphabet, actually every letter holds the sound of this character of the letter. Good. Let's look at the history of Chinese characters, starting here at the far left. So 1,200 BC, people began to draw. Things and actually didn't draw. They carved characters into the shell of a turtle. Then, fast forwarding 1,000 years, there was the first unified script. So, in the beginning, with the oracle bone script, there were different ways to draw this bird all over China. And then there was the first script where they unified it and they used it in the same manner. Then, 400 years later. Now, actually, the script is defined with just eight basic strokes, and that's the way they actually still use it today. So,、uh, basically, now in Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, because 1952, the Communist Party actually decided there are so many illiterate people in China, and we want to have them、uh, don't give them a hard time to learn the characters, so we simplified it a little bit. So, you see, in the case of the bird here, they chopped off the small little legs or what, and now that's just a line, and it got this cute little eye in the middle. So let's look at some other characters. This is also a pictogram taken from the real world. Does this remind you of anything? Mountain, Mountain. Mountain. tent, tree. a tree. Good. I heard the tree there sometimes. It's actually a nice tree. So in the oracle bone script, it actually looked like that. So here you see the twigs on top, and you also see that the root is more present the way. In the seal script, which was the first unified script all along China, you actually see the <laughs> roots really big, and here that's the way it looks now. And this is actually the regular traditional script and the simplified script in one, because yeah, that is simple enough, right? Good. Let's look at some other ways how characters are built. So we've got a tree, which is mu, <laughs> and now let's make it to ben. And how did it get ben? Well, by adding this horizontal line down there, and now we get into a bit more abstract way of forming characters, which is ideogram. So taking something real world, adding something, and it's more abstract. Any ideas what that might be? Dead tree. A dead tree. Is that? A gro growth of a tree. Almost, actually, it is the root. <laughs> yeah, the root of the tree. Got a line at the bottom. Actually, adding a line on top means future. So, and this actually is taken as 
further even. It's a um, process called transference, where the original meaning, which is quite practical, is taking on to a more abstract meaning. So actually, ban is nowadays also used not only for root, but also for like an origin or a source of something. Right, let's go on and look at another way to create characters. This again is a pictogram. What does that remind you of? Fire. Fire. Actually, it was already mentioned before. It's a mountain. <laughs> so you can perhaps think of having like the tips here being the tips of a mountain, right? We've got this one. Does anyone remember what Niao is? The bird. Perfect. The bird. This one is actually Shan, the mountain. <laughs> so we've got the mountain and the bird. And then we chop off the feet of the bird, stick the mountain below. <laughs> what do you think do we get? <laughs> hey, wait, 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 one hands, please. A vulture, a condor. A vulture, condor. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. It is actually an island. <laughs> what? An island? Why is that? Okay, let's think about it. So imagine you are on a sailboat back 2,000 years. I know this is like a modern pic I found on Google, but imagine we're on a sailboat long time ago, and then you're on the ocean, and then you see land. Oh, there's an island. What might be the first thing you see of that island? Birds. Yes, <laughs> birds and the mountain, and maybe the birds even flying around the mountain, right? There we go. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Right, so this is a way to form characters, and it's called the compa compound ideogram. Because you take two characters, which each have a meaning, combine them, and create a new meaning. That's actually Tao. <laughs> so, this is Mu. What's the Mu again? The tree. The tree, right. But the tree is even more than a tree. So, today it's also more generally used as wood, or something wood-related. So, in the case it's wood related, we can take it, this wood related thing, stack it together with some other characters, and form new characters. So, for example, here on the left, you see it's a pine, and then on the right, here you see a wooden board. So, um, the wooden board, ban, the pine, song, and when you, uh, and, ah, uh, yeah, sorry. So, you've got these new characters, and you see actually here the the mu, the word, is actually squashed a little bit, right? Because each and every character has to fit into a square box. And so the, the tree is squashed to give this other part um, some space. This other part is actually the phonetic part. And we will soon see how they actually work together. So 95% of Chinese characters are actually uh, uh, created in this manner. So when you usually see a talk about Chinese, they usually show you all the pictograms because they're beautiful. And I myself also showed you the nice island. It's just nice to look at, right? Um, but these are the most used ones. They've got one part which stands for the meaning, which is wood-related, and the other part which stands for the sounds. So this is called, in this case, a radical. So here the tree is the radical, which gives it the meaning. Now let's go back to our lovely bird, to Niao. And uh, so our Niao can become a Ya, which is a duck here in the lower corner, or it can also become an Ö, uh, which is a goose. Uh, I really love the Ö, uh. <laughs> it's a nice, a nice animal. And so here also the bird, Niao, got squashed a bit, but this time on the right side. So it can stand on the left or the right or the top or the bottom, it always depends. Good. And actually, these radicals can be really useful. So when you know there's a meow somewhere in your menu, you know this thing is somehow bird-related, right? <laughs> so here you've got, for example... <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot of chicken fans here, right? So, uh, <laughs> so if you want to eat chicken, yeah? you could make it out. That's actually the chicken you see has got this big bird in it. So let's go and look at the menu. Let's look even closer. Can any one of you spot the chicken in this menu? Okay, hands up. Who, who saw the chicken? Hey, there it is. <laughs> right? So next time you go to a Chinese restaurant, Ask for the Chinese menu, <laughs> As a, if you're up for chicken, of course, and, and just order. So it could have duck, but you also know duck, right? Yeah, so that's a G, the chicken. Good. 
So we talked about the bird radical. And, but let's now look closer at the yaw, at the duck, because we want to now look at the parts which it's made of. I told you that actually it's made out of one part which stands for the, sorry, one part which stands for the meaning and one for the sound. Each Chinese character itself has a meaning. So here as well, jia also has the meaning of armor or shell. But in this case, actually only the meaning of the birds here, niao, plays a role. Because we're not talking about the turtle here, right? <laughs> Doesn't have a shell. So the left side stands for the phonetic, for the sound, and the right side for niao. We will a moment here how jia and ya are actually related. <laughs> and but for that, we need to understand the sounds in Chinese. So, this thing, as I said, is jia, but actually I'm not just saying jia. Uh, you will, in a moment I will tell you more. And this is, has got the syllable of niao. So each character in Chinese has got a meaning and a syllable, which is defined with it. But even more, there's one specific tone out of four tones always also matched with the character. So jia is not just jia, but jia. And Niao is not just Niao, but Niao. And they both here have the third tone. So let's look at the three tones of the Chinese language. I'm sorry, the four tones of the Chinese language. So the tones here in Chinese language, they vary by pitch. And here I describe the four tones for you. They're actually also called first, second, third, and fourth tone. So and here the diagram on the vertical axis, on the five, is like oh, super high pitch and one like very low pitch. So I will pronounce the sounds for you once. So actually, these are all separate words here, and actually several different words. So we first got the first tone, which is very high pitch, nyao. Then we've got um, the rising tone, which is nyao. The third one goes down and up again, nyao. And we've got the fourth one, which like goes down very steep, nyao. Good. So here you see every. The character has a different tone. So actually, niao means our lovely bird, right? But niao actually means to pee or urine. <laughs> but usually, that's like clear from the context. So you probably wouldn't say, oh, look out there chirping on this little tree. There's a nice little urine. <laughs> now, you would probably know what that uh, actually does mean. So um, for beginners, don't worry. You can mess up the tones. At some point, it gets important. But now we know about the tones. So let's get back to our pictophonetic. So in the pictophonetic, as I said, there's one part standing for pictogram and the other one for phonetics, the sound. And here on the left side, we have the sound jia, and then we have our bird, niao. So we strike out the niao, it's just here for, as a radical. So it's just here for the meaning. And then we've got ya, which stands, uh, which gives a hint of the sound of the character. In the end, we end up with ya. So ya is kind of, it gives you a bit of a hint. Tells you, yeah, it goes in the direction of uh, ya something. And then uh, <laughs> there's this a in the end. But it doesn't even give you a hint whether the tone is correct. The tone, you see, is different for ya than it is for ya. But it helps you, as the bird helps you in a Chinese menu, when you actually know the characters, uh, you know jia, you know niao, and you've never ever seen ya before, you know it's some birdish thing, and it's, it's pronounced somewhat ya ya or something. That really comes in handy for names, which sometimes use very obscure characters. Good, now I want to pronounce one my favorite sy syllable together with you guys, and that's the syllable uh. <laughs> So imagine you come home after a long night out, you had really a lot of fun, you drank too much beer, you come home and then you're just, Ugh. <laughs> that's basically the sound. So and there, of course, are also four different ways to pronounce it. And there are also for each of them, there are different characters and words associated with it. <laughs> and so in the first tone, E, Actually, we've got um, a meaning of graceful. It's a character I found. Actually, there are several characters for many of the different pronunciations. Then for the goose with the rising tone, we already saw the uh, right? And then we've got nausea yeah, as um, uh, and we've got hungry as uh. Okay, now let's do it together and pronounce them one by one, starting with the first tone on the left side. So I will say the tone out loud, and wherever I raise my right hand, I want you to pronounce it as well together. 
<laughs> so, let's start. Uh, uh. Hey, please wait till I raise my right hand. <laughs> let's try it again, just to get it all together. Uh, uh. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. So, you're really experts in Chinese language now. So just one comment, so in my free time I'm also working on a small series of videos presenting daily life in China and also trying to teach a bit of Chinese. It's just in the beginning, but yeah, please check out breathechinese.com and subscribe if you like it and there hopefully will be more videos coming soon. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Andrea. This was all the... <laughs> <laughs> so we have time for some questions, please. Uh, given that you're, you're restricted in, in how you change your tone when you're speaking, uh, does that restrict the composition of songs in Chinese? So the question is, the speech system of tones, is it affecting the songs? Yes, yes. The, the, the music, the music the yeah. singing. Yes, so every language is restricting you in some way or the other. And so the Chinese language, of course, has just a limited set of 400 syllables. So there are just 400 syllables with four tones, making four times 400, 1,600. But you've got like 100,000 different characters, which all are different words. It um, sounds a bit limiting, but it's actually also a nice thing, because there's a lot of ambiguity often. And this you can use to play with. So actually, when you sing, think of, sing about something, uh, sometimes you might not know what um, the author of the song exactly means, or that you, you ha would have to look at the text, at the characters. So I myself wouldn't say it, restrict, uh, it restricts you, but it also opens up space for some other nice things which we don't have in our language. Yeah. Okay, so some other questions? Uh, do these rules also apply for Japanese or uh, in other Asian languages, or just for Chinese? So the question is how the rules are different maybe for other Asian languages and precisely for Japanese. Yeah, right. So I'm not an expert on many other languages, but in Japanese, the kanji script is actually also the Chinese script. But there it's um, quite different. So there are different characters have different meanings. So this character which has the meaning of house might have a different meaning in Japanese and in Japanese they also pronounce the things differently. And I don't think they have tones associated with kanji, but I'm not exactly sure about them. So we have time for one more question, please. Um, so, so far you gave the example of two nouns that you are adjoining together, but then in this case how do you take care of the tenses? Like, how do you say that you are doing something or you have done something? It's a really good question. So what about tenses in uh, Chinese language? Yes, yeah, so actually there are none. <laughs> so that, so uh, that's the cool thing, the Chinese grammar is really simple. <laughs> so you, um, you, you need context. And that's like in the cases of what I've shown you, uh, really context matters. So many, many nouns are actually verbs as well and adjectives and adverbs all in one. And um, a lot of the times, it's also that you kind of combine them with the right other one, which is like the preferred way of usage in daily life. And you can narrow down the meaning to just one character, but sometimes uh, people wouldn't even understand you when you just tell them, shout out this one character, like, uh, uh, they wouldn't know what, what that means. You would have to give them context, because uh could, could mean a lot of things, as you saw. <laughs> Thanks, so, a lot of, okay. Thanks a lot, Andrea. So, Yep, I think we don't have time, unfortunately, for more questions. So thank you.